everybody, I'm Toluca from Argers and Minions, and tonight I'm going to be planning Unit 2 for fourth grade. So anybody can follow along with this video as long as you are teaching grades 2 through 6 because I have this one universal template that we use for all grade levels. So I'll be focusing on fourth grade tonight, but as I'm planning, you can just plug in your own skills and strategies for your own grade level and it will work. Um, so this template is, like I said, only for grades two through six. There's a separate one for K1 teachers, and I will be planning unit two for using the K1 template next Sunday, okay? So tonight's video is for two through six. Now these planning templates are free on my TPT shop, so just be sure that you download these. They are available as you know, paper templates where you write in the skills, and then they're also available digitally so you can actually type in the skills. So I kind of like that version too. Mm, a quick word about these. All of the skills and strategies are going to be found in your TRS, and I'll show you where to find them. And then I'll explain briefly like the differences between my outline and then the TRS and benchmark. Um, and this is what I created based on um, just my own teaching and what made sense to me. So this is by like this is just a guide. Like if you'd like if you like this template, you can follow this same you know structure, weekly structure. If not, you can try to follow the TRS structure. Just do what makes sense for you. And I hope that the goal of I hope that the you know the message that you receive. Um, after planning with me is that you do have the freedom to become flexible with your teaching, even if it doesn't fit into the same, you know, five day plan as what's, you know, intended. Okay, so I'm going to be focusing on fourth grade unit two tonight. And the essential question is how do we reveal ourselves to others? So unit two, as I mentioned in last week's video is all around character for all grade levels. And specifically in fourth grade, it's about the characters, how they reveal themselves, their character traits, and how they interact and react with the other characters in the story. Hi, <laughs> welcome. Okay, so here we go. I don't have the TRS because I'm not a fourth grade teacher, but what I did do was I printed out the TRS view from online. This is just a screenshot. So this is what we're going to be looking at tonight as we're planning. And with your TRS, you will go, you'll find each week's plan. Uh, is a, It's like a one page paper like this in your TRS. It's at the beginning of each week. Now, if you're second grade and you're following along, yours looks a little different because it's broken up by day. Grades three and up, it's broken up by, um, where is it? Lesson number, numbers one through fi uh, 15. Yeah. So I like to look at this view and pull out the skills and strategies from here. Now I did color code it because I'm going to be using three main colors tonight on my planning templates. So all of my close reading or comprehension based lessons are going to be in red and all of my writing in green and all of my word study spelling in blue. Okay, so those are my three colors and it kind of helps to see helps helps you see uh, where everything fits in in your week and it's it's for visual learners it makes it feel a lot more organized oh hi <laughs> I love you too <laughs> thank you you guys are sweet okay so I've got that printed out and I also printed out some of the support materials that I have so that I can show you where these plug in because I have a, a lot of new members that go and maybe have this but don't exactly see the connection. So I'll show you, if you do have some of my resources, I'll show you exactly where they come into play and how they can support your whole group lessons. All right, so week one. Now, I start here with my close reading skills and I plan this way and I do that so that I can see exactly what is spiraling each week. When you see what spirals, it helps you feel a little bit more confident because you can kind of let go of the idea that you need to teach to mastery because you can you realize like, oh, it's coming up again next week. Um, and then it also helps you make decisions like if it's something 
the same, like what I was just saying, if it's coming up each week and you don't get to in week one, it's not the end of the world, okay? So in week one, you'll notice that's where there are the most close reading lessons because there are two short reads, there are two texts. So there's usually like seven uh, packed into five days. Um, or if you're following my template, it's really like four days, and I'll explain that later. And then it gets lighter. So uh, week one is where I get the most creative, and by creative, that either means like I'm pre-teaching that lesson and condensing it, or I'm not having the kids annotate much. I'm just kind of exposing, or I might combine two together, or I might skip and wait until next week. Okay, so week one, I've got these close reading lessons here. They're under my two short reads. I see key events and summarize, and now that comes up for both texts. I'm just gonna write it one time. Okay, because I'm only going to teach it once. I'm not going to teach it for both texts. Already there, there's the first decision I make. I'm going to save that whole class time. In, uh, instead of doing key events and summarizing again for that second text, I'm going to bring in another lesson. So I'm just going to write that down once. Key events and summarize. Now the next thing I see is... Describe characters drawing on details in the text. Okay, so I'm going to write analyze characters. And I just kind of, this is just my tool here, my planning tool, so I'm going to use my own words. Instead of writing out like these long lesson titles, I'm just going to write what makes sense to me. Okay, and then I see understand and use words that signal states of being. Okay. So, signal words, and I might write states of being. <clears throat> okay, then I see that second key events in summarize, which I'm going to skip. I'm not going to write that down. And then lesson 10 I see is make connections between a story and a read aloud play. Okay, so I'm going to write make connections and in parentheses read aloud, so, or between a story, so text and read aloud play. So between text versus story. Story versus play, sorry. So for that lesson, fourth grade teachers, you're going to be using the, um, the text. And then I think you need to actually, I'm not sure, go into that lesson, but I think you actually need to bring in an additional resource on your own for that play. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. But lesson 10, go in and investigate that further. Because I think I remember something like that last year when I was making the closed reading companions. Hmm. It might have been fourth and fifth, or there's a few lessons where you need to go and actually like find the video clip or find the play, etc. Again, I'm like recalling from a year ago, so double check. Okay, and then I see lesson 13 is figurative language, so similes. Okay, and then lastly, down at the bottom here, if you're looking at this this weekly view, you'll see at the bottom compare and contrast fables and fairy tales. So I'm just going to write compare, contrast two texts. Okay. Now, I planned ahead for this video and I planned this already like an hour or so ago. And I know that this lesson here, the signal words is, is, con is a context clues lesson. Okay, so um, that, I'm going to use that when I'm plugging it into my weekly layout and also I'm going to pull that out and I'm going to highlight that as my build vocabulary strategy. Now I pull that out, it's a close reading skill, so yes it, it isn't part of your close reading lessons, but I do like to pull that out just because mentally so that I know that there is going to be an explicit lesson around vocabulary. Okay. So, like I said, it's basic, it's a use context clues lesson. All right, so now I'm going to go into week two, close reading. So it looks like this. 
Okay. This time change has the lighting, the sun setting kind of earlier. So it's, I have my blackout curtains on me right now because otherwise I'd be like a zillion degrees, but also it kind of makes it dark in here. So I apologize. Okay, week two, I've got the two key events and summarize lessons. I'm just going to write it once and you'll see why when I get to my week two planner. Key events and summarize. Then I see understand and use words that signal states of being again. I'm just going to write signal words again and mental note. That's like a context clues lesson. And then um, let's see. We've got lesson eight, make inferences about story characters. And that sounds kind of similar to this week one lesson where we're analyzing characters, which makes sense, right? Because our whole unit theme is characters and we're analyzing them, comparing them. About characters. And then make connections between a story and a visual presentation. So story versus visual, I'm just gonna write visual. So slightly different, right, from week one. Week one we're doing story versus a play and then story versus a visual presentation. And then lastly, the lesson 14 is compare and contrast characters. And I'm going to pull out my vocabulary strategy again. Context clues. Okay, so here's what mine looks like. Okay. And now week three. So in your TRS, um, sorry, Susie, I'm just seeing your comment now. In your TRS for the, this weekly view here, you actually have to actually thumb through each page. Now, if there is a, the cardstock insert in the beginning of your TRS does have all of your skills and strategies for the entire week laid out in one place. But I like to go into the individual weeks and look at this view because I can see that, especially in week one, it's really helpful to see like exactly what text the lessons kind of go with. So, like these lessons go with your first short read. Sorry for that glare. Um, these lessons go for your second with your second short read. So just kind of this is just my own kind of preference, but you can really do this same st like planning strategy using that main cardstock insert if you'd like. But yeah, it's at the beginning of each week. There's that page, and then on the back, I believe it's like a suggested pacing guide, and then there's the text guide to text complexity, you know, those pages before your actual lessons. Okay, now I'm going to look at week three. And I see we've got key events and summarize. So if you're in week one teaching key events and summarize and you're like, oh my gosh, the kids are not getting it. Don't worry, it's gonna come up again and again. Then I see make connections between a text and a movie. Okay, so this is, I think, where you need to go find your movie clip. Text versus movie. Then I see make connections between a story and visual presentation. Okay, so same thing as from week two. Story versus visual, all right again. And then I see lesson 11, and this is the only difference between, for this unit, for between California and national. For California, it's analyzed genre. 
And then for national, it's going to be another similes lesson, so figurative language. And then lesson 14, compare and contrast topics in two texts. All right, and then there is no vocabulary strategy from what I can see, no lesson for vocabulary in week three. So now what you can do is look at your week your three weeks, your entire unit, and see what spirals, okay? So just off the top of my head, like this one was exactly the same. So make connections, story versus visual, in weeks two and weeks three. So uh, I don't know, this might be like a continuation of week two's lesson. It might be just you're literally just practicing, practicing the same thing again with a different text. So already there though, I see like, okay, we're gonna get this, more than once, especially because you've got these other ones here, make connections between a text and a movie, and between a story and a play. So that strategy of making connections, that skill is gonna come up a lot. So that's, that's really, we can see like an emphasis in this fourth grade unit. We also have the analyzed characters, and I think that's probably gonna be a skill that all, all of us see, no matter, regardless of grade level, I think that that's gonna be something that's, that comes up quite a bit, okay? Um, if you notice something that only comes up once throughout the span of your unit, you might want to put an asterisk close to it so that you know, like, maybe this is something that I have to make sure that I get to, something I want to maybe look through first and see, you know, how does this tie into the rest of it, etc. All right. So now I've got spelling and phonics. Spelling. So, week one, thank you, Gail. Week one, I see that the spelling pattern, and I'm going to switch to blue now. So, it's going to be long and short I. And I found that right under word study. So, in week one, it's going to be lessons eight and 11 your word study lessons, and then week two, nine, 12, week three, nine, 12. So week two, the word study spelling pattern, long and short U. And week three, the closed syllable pattern. The closed syllables. Okay, now your, your spelling patterns do not spiral. Except for each grade. <laughs> so within a year, the spelling patterns don't spiral, but like, the long vowels, they'll start the year for every grade level with that. Does that make sense? So it, it spirals throughout the grade levels, but not throughout your own year. Okay, now language and writing, I'm going to put both of those in green because the language is meant to be taught in context in the writing. So your language skill is going to be found in your drafting lesson. So in week one, your drafting lesson is lesson number 12. And just looking at this list where it says writing to sources, I see that um, 12 is draft a narrative text. And so I would go into there and I would see look on the second page and that's where it says the language skill. So I pulled those out already. So for week one, fourth grade, Yours is formal versus informal English. And national teachers just sit tight for a second. Formal and informal English. Week two, the language skill. I wrote on my notes here. Complete sentences and like focusing on fragments.
and week three, interrogative pronouns. Okay, so now you're writing, in the California edition, the writing circulates, it switches between narrative, opinion, informative in each unit. So in week one, the type of writing is going to be a narrative. So it says, like I'm looking at lesson three and it says read and analyze a narrative prompt. Okay, so I'm gonna write narrative. just in general, what kind of writing. And then week two, I see read and analyze an informative or explanatory prompt. So I'll write informative. And since we have our narrative and informative, I know week three is going to be opinion. Okay, so California teachers, while you're going in and finding you know, your language skill and your type of writing, I'm going to briefly talk about the national edition. So National Edition, your biggest difference between California and, oh, by the way, National, as, as far as I know, is everywhere except for California. So yours is also known as like the Common Core Edition, even though we follow Common Core here too, but it, yours says Common Core Edition. Um, if you're using the California Edition, you'll see the state of California on your materials. So that's how you know. So... In National, your writing over the course of Unit 2 is process writing. So you're not going to be switching genres each week. You're not going to be, you know, having a new prompt each week. You're going to be developing the same writing over the course of the three weeks. All the California teachers are like, what? Jealous. So your writing is going to be writing a fairy tale. And, um, yeah, I'll go into what that looks like when I plan each week, how about that? I printed out my booklet so that I could actually see what the lessons were, and I'll show you how the, the process unfolds throughout the three weeks. So your language skills I found were week one, commas, so comma usage, week two, past progressive tense, and week three, kind of a review, commas, and then progressive tenses. Okay, so for writing, I would just write, process writing fairy tale, process writing fairy tale, process writing fairy tale to show that it is all three weeks. All right. Um, Hilda, no, I'm not planning second grade tonight. I'm only doing fourth grade for unit two. Okay, so now I'm going to, now that I have my unit overview plan, I'm going to dive into week one and see where my lessons fit into my five-day span. So the main difference between just this, again, this is just what I created based on my, my teaching schedule. Day one, I made two decisions here. In day one, I knew that I wanted to explicitly teach the spelling and the grammar or the language for the week instead of waiting until those later lessons. So for example, what I mean by that is your word study lesson for let's say week one is lesson number eight where you introduce long I and short I and that doesn't come up until midweek. So I, I'm leaving you know, spelling lessons later in the week, but I'm also bringing up that first intro lesson to be Monday so that my kids can actually practice throughout the week as independent practice. The same with the language, because the language isn't taught until that drafting lesson. Remember I said you have to go into actually like lesson 12, look on the second page, there's your explicit, not, well, in context grammar lesson. So you still want to teach it in context, but I also like to just go over it explicitly in, on Monday just to prepare them. So I added that in there on Monday. And then what I also did in terms of reading, I found that I liked to read the text completely to my kids instead of breaking it up, which happens in weeks two and weeks three with that extended read. You'll read the first half, find the key events or key details. Then the next day, read the second half and again, do that lesson. So what I did was I read all of it in one day just as a read aloud where I'm 
bringing the text to life and I'm modeling fluent reading and I'm making it exciting and how can we make this text super fun for the kids? And um, then the next day is when we open it back up again. We say, okay, now let's pull out the key details and, uh, or the key events. So those are the, that's the two main differences here. And now since I'm not doing any close reading here, comprehension, I'm simply just reading it aloud, all of my close reading lessons, all of those red lessons get pushed a day. So that's, like I said earlier, my week one is where I get most creative because in week one you have like seven close reading lessons. Um, but for me, I've got four days really. So the two short reads are going to be listed here. So for fourth grade, we've got The Gnat and the Bull and Snow White Meets the Huntsman. Now, if you're second grade, you've got shared reads as well. So the shared reads have additional lessons around like phonics and fluency, sometimes a little bit of comprehension in there. Um, and those are just the two really tiny short texts in the beginning. So your shared reads, second grade, are every day. And you're using those two texts. So, but I don't, I don't put phonics or shared read in here just because this is a shared template for grades two through six. And in three through six, we don't have daily phonics. We don't have daily shared read. Okay, so that's where there's a difference. Now on day one, I'm going to do my, here, let me underline it with my red, my short read number one. So in this case, the gnat and the bull, and I'm going to do the first and the second read. Now I just did, made up something called the three reads. So I am going to do the first read. So that's where I'm reading it aloud to them. Like I said, making it super fun, engaging, and basically doing song and dance up there. And then the second read, the kids immediately follow up and read with a partner or by themselves and they annotate using the symbols that we've taught in the beginning of the year. And I don't tell them what to annotate. I just say, you know, read it to yourself, digest it, connect with it. That's it for day one. Then I go into phonics. Look at my awesome color coding. I'm remembering to color code. And language. So this is where you would teach the pattern explicitly if you do follow this method, just so that they have some, so then they know how to do their independent practice for the rest of the week. So here's where the pamphlets that I made come into play. You can also use the practice pages on Benchmark Universe. Click on practice tab and you can print out full pages. So just you, I just use this and we highlight or we underline or I might do some sort of word sort on the, the board. Um, this is also where I bring in like Schoolhouse Rock or really anything that I like that you like to teach spelling and grammar. Okay, and that's usually very quick. It's not, it's not an intense lesson. Then following that, we go into our writing lesson. Now, in California, our analyze the prompt lesson is always first. So in week one, that's going to be lesson number three. And we wrote that it is gonna be a narrative, right? Yeah, so I'm gonna write narrative here. Now. There are two prompts that Benchmark gives you. And one's the model prompt and one is the student prompt. So the way that it's intended is you are teaching using your model prompt and then the students are transferring the skills to their student prompt. So some teachers do that, some teachers just use one prompt, some teachers write a, a mashup of their own. The model prompt is gonna be found in your TRS and the student prompt is going to be found in the build, on the Build Reflect Write page in the student consumable text in their little magazine. Okay, so what I do typically is look at both, see which one I like more. I'm usually sitting down with my teacher partner and we talk about, well, this one's gonna be, this one makes more sense, or this one's kind of confusing. We, we choose and we tweak if needed as well. And then um, this is where the writing booklets come into play then we'll type in the prompt that we are using. So week, day one, you're analyzing the prompt, and if you use the, um, the tables that Benchmark gives you in that lesson, you're gonna be analyzing several features, and I was finding that that took a real long time, and 
you know, which is which is fine. Um, but I condensed it into just three areas: main topic, type of writing, and source. And we color coded it. It's just a coincidence that I'm using the same colors right now, but it doesn't mean doesn't mean anything. Um, and I just we would we would read the prompt and analyze it together. So we talk about well, what's the main topic? So in this case, fourth grade unit one. I chose the prompt, how would the queen in Snow White meets the Huntsman describe herself? Write a fictional account of a conversation between you and the queen. Include dialogue and make sure to use details and evidence from the fairy tale you read. So that's the model prompt. So then I would, we would go into like, well, what, are, what exactly are you writing about? What's your main topic? Okay, a conversation between me and the queen. And I put also, she's going to be talking about herself. So, because the first question is, how would she describe herself? So I want to teach the kids um, that probably that's an element that we're going to be incorporating in the writing. And then the type of writing, we look for clue words in the prompt. How can we tell what our writing purpose or type of writing will be? And we wrote fictional account using dialogue. Okay, that means it's a narrative. And then finally, the source. Where am I going to be getting the information that I need for my writing? So I narrow it down to just these three things. If you look in the benchmark lessons with the tables, there's a ton of great things to analyze there. So take a look at that too, see if you, if you actually want to go into that detail with your kids. All right, so that's day one. Day two, we immediately come to the carpet. We start by opening our short read from the day that before that I read to them. So the nap and the bull for fourth grade. And then I say, okay, well, when you were annotating yesterday, what words did you circle? What words were unfamiliar? And we review the vocabulary together. Okay, so I always like to weave that in a little bit. It's like a quick, I'm gonna underline it in red. It's like a quick little comprehension-based lesson where we go over some of the tricky words that they found, okay? Then we have the third read of our, our text. So third read meaning like my three reads. So by now it's the third time we're reading it. First time with me, second time kids, third time now it's actually comprehend it. So we pull out the, it's always that first lesson, right? The key events. So I'm going to write that down. It's lesson two key events, and summarize. Okay. And then from there, we open up our writing booklet, and now we've just made sense of this text, right? Now we're gonna open up the writing, and we're gonna find text evidence. That's always the, pretty much always the next lesson. So we're gonna lift a couple lines that are going to help us and solve or um, solve right to this prompt. All right, so that's going to be lesson number six. Okay, so that's what mine looks like right now. And like I said, national yours is going to be process writing, and your first week is going to be preparing to write. So day one for national, you're gonna be analyzing a mentor text. So you're gonna be reading the fairy tale and you're gonna be analyzing these features of a fairy tale. And then day two, a quick brainstorm. Just think, have the kids come up with a couple ideas and then they kind of just choose which idea they want to explore over the next three weeks. That's day one and day two for national. Okay, now day three. Day three is where I transition from the first text in week one to the second text. So the first one, short read one, is the gnat and the bull that we've already done the key events in uh, summarizing for. And I'm going to bring in my next close reading lesson. So that's going to be, and I'm just pulling from here, analyzing the characters. So that is the lesson number four. Analyze the characters. And I've seen several questions lately about the close reading companions, so I printed out that lesson just to show you. If you open up your TRS 
and you open up the close reading companion that I made, it's the same lesson. So the TRS has this purpose for reading, which is analyzing characters, and then the TRS always has some sort of like table. Now the whole point of the graphic, the um, close reading companions, one of the points is I made a different kind of organizer, okay? So that's the, organ the analyzed characters, but it's not like you're just pulling this out of thin air. If you go in and you look at the TRS, the table, those are gonna be the same, same sort of answers, right? Because that's where you're following the lesson still, okay? This is the part that doesn't go with anything in the lesson that just shows what it looks like when being assessed. So it puts this skill in testing language, okay? So this is up to you to use however you wish. You can do it as a follow-up to your lesson, uh, you know, explicitly teach the kids, uh, which I liked to use this for because um, the tests are hard. They kind of need that practice. You can use it as an exit, exit ticket, whatever. But that's uh, a kind of a question that I saw come up a couple times. It was like, where are those answers? They're in there. Don't worry. So that's that lesson, lesson four, analyze characters. Then we go into phonics and language in context. So this is where we're going to bring our word study text in, which is going to be usually lesson, it's lesson 11 in week one. And the word study text, see practice in context, the word study text is going to be that one page short text that's full of the spelling pattern, words that have the long and short I. So I'm just going to write the title there. And this I've seen used so many different ways. Some teachers don't even do that whole class. Eventually they, that can be like independent practice where the kids go in and find the words, sort the words from the text. But there's room for it if you're following my daily planner. There's room for it on day three. Okay. Next, we've got, we're going to transition to the second text. So the second text that week for fourth grade is going to be Snow White Meets the Huntsman. And we're going to follow the same protocol where you do the first read and then the second read. So you read it to them, then the kids immediately read it, annotate, circle words that are unfamiliar, put smiley faces, things like that. And then that's it. We're not going to go into key events and summaries. From there, we, fit, we follow up with our writing lesson. So the writing lesson is number nine, and it's the planning. So what that looks like in, if you have these booklets, take a look here. I never, I almost never put the planning page in here. I go immediately into drafting. Now, when I'm teaching personally, I like to use that planning day to bring in my step up to writing organizers or like the thinking maps organizers. And so that's kind of where I bring in my other writing strategies, my other writing program, if you will, and kind of blend it. So you won't, in the California booklets anyway, you won't typically won't find a planning page in there. Now, in the National Edition, you do, for this week, you do have a quick planning page, okay? It's hard to switch between California and National, but I want to make sure that everyone's represented. Okay, now day four, that's it for the day. We break off into our small groups. Okay, day four. We come on down to the carpet. We open up Snow White and the Huntsman, which we did our first two reads from yesterday. And I review the vocabulary. So I go over what was confusing to them, what unfamiliar, whatever. If there's a context clues lesson that, that uh, week, which there was, right? Use context clues. Then you can kind of do it there uh, or here, right? There's two opportunities to review vocabulary. And then we do a close read. Now, I mentioned before that I don't do another key events and summarize lesson. I go ahead and pull from the other lessons. So in this case, I would write lesson 10, make connections between a story and a read aloud. Okay. 
play, read aloud play. And then I have room for two lessons that day. And so my next one would be the similes lesson. And sometimes if you're looking at your week and you realize that like you have two really meaty lessons here, you can kind of try to swap if it works, okay? But the only thing to consider is this lesson is related to short, short read one, so sometimes that's where it gets a little tricky. Week two and week three, it doesn't matter because you're using the same text for everything. So if you uh, notice that maybe you have like a lighter lesson here and two heavy ones here, you might be able to switch it. Save time. I'm always trying to look for where I can save time. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, and then we do our writing lesson, which is the drafting. And that's going to be lesson 12. And if you notice, and this is just a personal pressure, preference for me, I don't do, I, it's quick. It's like not a ton of drafting. Um, with my third graders, that's the extent of it. It's not this crazy you know, what we're used to, right? Like trying to teach the kids to write paragraphs, etc. I try to keep it just really focused on incorporating that text evidence and making sure that they are writing to the prompt. And if they can do that here, then I feel, I feel like I've accomplished my objective. So, and here's also where I'll bring in like the color coding from step up to writing, etc. Okay. Day, um, and then um, the national, I don't know exactly. Actually, I did take notes. Your day four is going to be organizing your fairy tale. Okay. So, day, like week one for national, like I mentioned, it's a, they're not writing yet. They're just kind of brainstorming, organizing, getting their thoughts out there. And then week two is when they start actually drafting. Okay. Now, day five, we have the assessment, which takes a while. So sometimes we will assess and then not have time for lesson 14. That's just the reality of it sometimes for us. Um, but ideally, we will give our assessment when they're you know, nice and fresh. We've just started our ELA block. They take their test, and then we do that lesson 14 where it's comparing and contrasting. And that lesson I love, it's, it's always a compare contrast or integrate information, a lesson that uses two tests. That, that's always 14 on day five. And I love that lesson because you can pretty much always turn that into, if you wanted, um, a chart, a, you know, big Venn diagram. It's just something a little more interactive if you want to. You can assign some kids this text, some kids that text, and then we put the info together, things like that. Okay, and then day five of writing is lesson 15. It's always the revise and the edit. And that looks like this if you have my booklets. And this is what I've talked about just a lot in the past before. I don't have the kids revise everything. I don't have them edit everything. I'll have them refer to their draft, pull out a sentence that they think that they can expand using descriptive details. And they'll rewrite it here using descriptive details, using the skill. And then the same thing for editing. So the skill is use correct capitalization in that lesson. So I'll say, okay, find a, a, a sentence in here where maybe you didn't capitalize who we're writing about, Snow White, okay, or whatever. And then rewrite it. And then when I'm looking, I focus on these two awesome sentences. And it makes it a little more manageable. And that's my week. That's what that looks like. And I tend to follow the Monday through Friday pattern. And if I don't get to it in that Monday through Friday time, I move on. I, 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 don't, I personally don't like continuing the next week with last week's text, especially because it's a lot of the same lessons. You might as well use a fresh text. OK, now week two. We've got Come Away, Come Away, which is a, an excerpt from Peter, Peter Pan. I put in our spelling words already there. If you are a teacher that likes to give spelling tests, um, you might, this is just kind of at a glance, your words for the week. And then your, your language focus as well. So, 
language skill for week two is complete sentences. I've seen spelling come up a little bit lately too. Um, there is an opportunity to give spelling tests, at least in third, like a pre-test and a post-test. On the weekly and unit assessment though, it doesn't test on those specific words. It tests on the spelling pattern. So there will be, you know, several questions where it says, in this case, we choose long and short U. Which of the following words um, has the same vowel sound as abundant? And they'll have a, 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 a undent underlined. And then they have to read the words. And like three of them will be unrelated or it'll be like a long U. And then they have to find the one that has the short U. It's, it's, it's like that. And it's not necessarily, it's not the words that they you know, memorized all week. So that's why I tend to get away from that. I don't really give the spelling test. Okay, day one, you're gonna read your extended read. It's long, it's Peter Pan. I'm just gonna read it to them. If they're not exhausted by the time that you've finished reading it, then you can have them go in and do their second read where they're annotating. Or maybe you might even blend it, I don't know, or you follow up the next day where you have them sit down, read it to themselves and annotate. So that's what I do first. Then again, I go into my phonics and my language. And I don't think I mentioned this before, but this is also where, because I do assign this, this pamphlet of activities, this is where I do go in and I'll do, um, you know, like one qu question here, a question here, a question here, a question here, and make sure that they know how to answer those questions. They understand the directions. And then I just use this as my teaching tool a lot of the times too. See? All right. Then writing, we analyze the prompt, and we said week two was informative. Now, if you're national, let me just hold up um, a little something for you so you can see the progression, national teachers. So look at writing. Here, national, if you have these templates, the national templates, you've got more space because your writing is a little more specific. It doesn't follow the same pattern. So here I've got establish a situation and introduce characters. Then add description to develop your characters and events. Add dialogue to develop those things. Provide a sense of closure. And day five is always a language lesson. Okay? Past progressive tense. So that's... Just look at your TRS, lessons 4, 7, 10, 13, and 15. Okay. All right, now day two, I'm going to plug in my close reading lesson. It's always going to be the key events and summarize, but like I said, I only like to teach that once. So I'm going to put 3 slash 5 for the lesson number. And this... I don't, I really don't stress with this lesson because I know the kids get it all the time. They even get it in small groups. So I might not do the whole entire text, okay? I might just pull out some key events from the beginning, middle, end, summarize it. Sometimes the TRS has you going into every paragraph and look at it ahead of time. And that's my advice to you. Don't get lost in that lesson because it's intense. There's a lot there. Okay, and then writing the fine text evidence. So lesson seven. I'm not doing third, I'm not doing second. I'm just, yeah, <laughs> Joanne, thank you. Um, I'm, I don't do grade level specific planning videos typically. I did that with unit one because I wanted to get everyone off to a strong start. But now as we go on throughout the year, I'm, I'm just gonna choose one grade level to focus on with each unit. And, but like I said, same strategies. Just find the exact lesson from your TRS, plug it in, okay? So if, and the reason why is because like if I do every grade level, I'd have to do K through six, right? And then in order to do all the units and keep up with all of you, I'd have to do them on weeknights, like I did with unit one. And that's just hard because I have, you know, two little ones at home. Okay, and the next day, we're going to start with close reading, and I'm going to pull out one of my other lessons. And I can do the 
context clues. I can do the inferencing, make inferences about characters. Okay, so just choose what you want to plug in there. I think I'm going to plug in the inferencing lesson. Make inferences about characters. And then the next day, um, I'm just going to skip to day four real quick. That's a meaty lesson, right? So to do that with the um, make connections between the story versus a visual presentation, back to back, that might be a lot. So instead, I'm moving that first one, the inferencing lesson here. And in this spot, I'll do the context clues because that is an easier lesson. And then that make connections lesson will be my second one. And that is lesson number 11. And I also know that this one, right, this one's repeated next week. So if, for whatever reason, if my context clues takes a real long time, I'll know, okay, at least I'll have this opportunity again next week and I'll have to prioritize it. Okay. I plugged in my lesson 14 as well. So now I'm done with my red, I'm done with all my comprehension. I'm going to go back and plug in my word study text, which is going to be Peter the Wild Boy. And then my writing. So day three, we're planning, lesson 10. Day four, we're drafting, lesson 13. Day five, we're revising and editing, 15. There you go. Okay, so week three, I'm not gonna go into it. It follows the same exact structure as this. It's a lot easier to plan weeks two and weeks three, like I said, because you've just got one text. So it's easier to move lessons around, combine. Um, so it's going to follow this like same format for the next week. So that's where I'm going to stop um, and show real quickly national teachers. In weeks two, that's where the kids are drafting, okay, adding to their drafts, language focus, day five. Then week three, we're going to be revising, revising, editing, publishing, okay? And there's like an emphasis on margins and the way we publish. So that's the progression for national. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it. If you've got any questions, or if you wanna see these up close, like how I've analyzed them, let me know. I can take photos of these. I just did, I chose three prompts. I think week two, I chose, this I cho chose the model. Week two, I think was student. This one I chose model, and I just analyzed it myself. So if you wanna see that as a reference, just let me know. National, I'm not gonna write a fairy tale, but <laughs> you get the idea, it's a little bit, it's a little more used to the type of writing that we're used to. They're a little more reflective of the type of writing. And that's it. Hope I answered your questions around, you know, spelling, et cetera, and the way that I plan. Okay. Laura K. When's next week? Heather, do you switch up the writing according to benchmark each week or continue the same writing theme? Also, do you do the weekly assessments or only the unit one? For writing, um, yeah, we, as Gail said, thanks Gail, we switch up the genre each week. What I like to do is I don't, I still like to do process writing, so I will also, I'll either take one of the prompts from the three weeks and build on that and have that be a process for all three weeks, but I have to kind of bring that in outside of my BA block because I'm still adhering to the, the weekly writing. Um, we, unit two, we, uh, in third grade, we write a fable. 
And, you know, and in my specific case, like we've got mm, support, you know, intervention teachers and we can, we can kind of use their support in writing. So we'll, we'll bring something to publish usually. Um, but it's, like I said, it's not necessarily in our BA time. Oh, and then the unit and the weekly assessments. Yes, I give all the tests. Um, let's see. Sometimes, let me take, let me backtrack. Sometimes, like, um, I'll, if I don't have time for the unit assessment, I'll just give the writing part of the unit assessment. So sometimes I'll do things like that. But the, those weekly assessments, I teach the kids how to take those, and I give those religiously because I get a lot of data from that. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna answer the other questions in the comments and sign off for tonight. And I'll be around. If you have any additional questions, just go ahead and leave them on this video. And I will also be uploading this video to my YouTube channel to um, come back to in the future. Okay, bye guys.